guys, you probably noticed there's something different. I don't have my magical blue screen background because I'm out of town on business. Well, you know the expression, ladies love a bad boy, right? Sometimes you just want to root for the bad guy. Alex DeLarge, Paul Kersey, Ferris Bueller. He was a criminal. Paul Kersey was a murderer avenging the death of a loved one. So was Mrs. Voorhees. See what I'm getting at? It's all relative. It's time to do hard time. This is Escape from Alcatraz. Frank Morris, played by Clint Eastwood, had been a bad boy and is taken to Alcatraz. Let's get right to it. Strip down. Frau Bluger! They march him naked to his cell for some reason. I know what you're thinking. It is the San Francisco Bay and it is freezing. Welcome to Alcatraz. <laughs> At breakfast, Frank is already making friends. Bruce M. Fisher is Wolf, our resident Romeo and pasta aficionado. Someone saw Lady in the Tramp. Aw, he seems friendly. But Frank don't swing that way. He also befriends Litmus, played by Frank Ronzio. He's feeding the mouse under the table. Oh, thank God that's not a euphemism. Stuart Little is doing hard time. Wolf is still trying. Look, Wolf, I know you're trying to be the top, but if you pick Clint Eastwood, you're gonna be the bottom. Time to meet the Warden, played by Patrick McGowan. That's his name. He doesn't have a name. It's the Warden. Just the Warden. Maybe that is his name. What other job could he get? I bet he uses the speech on everyone. If you disobey the rules of society, they send you to prison. If you disobey the rules of the prison, they send you to us. Let's set this guy up right now as our big bad. A big bad with a nice manicure. Knowledge of the outside world is uh, what we tell you. They had Fox News back then? Your world will be everything that happens in this building. It's kind of small, isn't it? I know, it's a Zoolander joke, but I just couldn't resist. You will shave once a day. You will shower twice a week. You will cut your hair once a month. You may pee every third Monday and don't even think about pooping. It's such a great prison, even the birds are in cages. Frank's life must be a lot like those pixel hunt video games where you have to pick up items to progress. No one has ever escaped from Alcatraz, and no one ever will. Challenge accepted. Well, I should be able to shank a bitch with this. Into the inventory it goes. Hopefully the guards never watched the Shawshank Redemption. Shower time and Litmus washes the mouse. Again, not a euphemism. Guys, keep your mouse clean. Luke is here for some good, clean fun. Go ahead, make his day. I'm looking for a new punk. Wolf fails to realize is Clint is the one who calls people punk. Punk? Again, he don't swing that way. And he punches him right in the erection. Oh, now he's gonna go blind. Haven't you seen a Christmas story? So poisoning. Frank gets a job in the prison library and befriends English, leader of the black inmates and expert on the rock. Let's be friends and not make it racial whatsoever. Okay. It's the rock, man. They don't want you doing anything here. But die. Meet Doc, the resident painter. You scared of dying? This is no place for a sensitive soul. You gotta go. You hurt Wolf. Wolf's gonna hurt you. English lays out some more intel for Frank. Well, no one's ever busted out. Well... There was that one Scottish fellow. In fact, everyone has advice for Frank. Little bits of information to help him escape. For a bunch of criminals, they're extremely supportive. They even warn Frank when Wolf is about to stab him with a different kind of shiv. <laughs> Fighting is frowned upon and Frank is sent to the hole with Wolf. Not the hole he had in mind. The hole, or solitary confinement, is a terrible punishment which often results in hallucinations, such as speaking to empty furniture. Not to worry, Frank is back in time to meet his new neighbor, Charlie Butts. <coughs> the warden finds Doc's portrait of him, and he's mad that he kind of made him look like Ray from Archer. I want painting privileges taken away from Chester Dalton. Mmm, harsh. But Doc takes it well. Painting's all I have. I'm sorry, Doc. 
I'm making a new table. I need a hatchet. Uh, red flag. Will you come over here for a minute? Another red flag? Oh, shit. Right in the face of authority, Doc gives them the finger. Several, in fact. That's the end of Doc. He's gone. His character disappears from the movie, presumably to a psychiatric facility, or at least another prison with a stricter hatchet policy. Frank starts to see cracks in the system from yet another helpful inmate. Now squeeze in. The warden and Frank play the pronoun game. Yeah, it seems someone didn't like what he was painting. Someone should have warned Doc to be careful. There's always the possibility that some asshole will be offended. I'm sorry, who are we talking about again? This warden is very involved in the day-to-day -day stuff. I used to assume they were like high school principals that you only see them when you're in trouble, but this guy's right in there. Frank meets the Anglin brothers, fellow prison escape experts played by Jack Thibault and Fred Ward. The warden said he knew just the place for us. Alcatraz. The concrete in this place is a disgrace. At least Andy Dufresne needed a hammer. Having assembled an interested party, Frank lays it out. It's a simple plan. I may have found a way out of here. The plan in a nutshell, they dig through their walls with stolen tools, build paper mache heads to distract the guards, and flee with a homemade raft. Okay, maybe not that simple. Frank gets to work. Nail clippers don't make good digging implements, so they upgrade to stolen spoons. <coughs> to make them effective, take some jailhouse welding, which looks more like soldering, but I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know if this works, but I'm itching to try it. Cut to me standing outside a flaming tool shed. There's a close call when a guard walks by. I wonder if he was in any real danger. The guard seems to be legally blind. Well, I could look 10 degrees to the left, but oh well, look, something shiny. Frank makes even more tools, but he has to sneak them past the guards. Hey, that's where I keep my gum. More digging than onto creating paper mache false grills. Keep in mind, this was based on a true story. They bust through, but before they can work, they need some decoy heads. True story. They even get close to getting caught, but Frank is a goddamn ninja. Yeah, what's up? So where do you get a power drill in a prison? Why, well, you build one from an electric fan motor, that's where. They're making genuine progress. All we need is a dead friend and we'll be set. Bingo! Someone called for taunting from the warden gives Doc a heart attack. Oh no, Stuart! Some men are destined never to leave Alcatraz. Alive. Oh, shut up, man. You won. Split them up. Move Mars. Yes, sir. Now we're on a timetable. The warden wants to move the gang to different cells, and Wolf is back. I got a present for you. I'll give it to you. Later. Is that a shiv in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? Nope, it's a shiv. But English is there to defuse the situation. It's like you can use some exercise. Mm -hmm. They'll take good care of them. So they leave tonight. Three out of four ain't bad. Butts loses his nerve. But Stuart is game. You're going to. <laughs> you have a live mouse in your pocket, but you draw the line at rats. They make it to the roof very quietly. Where's Butts? Right behind us. Damn it, Mr. Tishmacher, where are you? Butts finally hauls ass, but it's too late. He misses his window. Down the prison building, over the fence, down to the beach. They inflate rafts and life jackets made from raincoats. Again, this was a true story. They even did a Mythbusters about it. And they are out of here. The next morning, Butts is still there, but they are in for a rude awakening. God damn it, Mars, I said you. Yeah. Oh my god, I killed him! I have superpowers! I can fight crime! Attention, all personnel! Incoming warden! Of course, there is a massive manhunt, but no sign of Frank and the Anglins. But what about Stuart? Warden? I just got a message from the director. I want you on the next plane to Washington. You are so fired. Just like a man who can't find the Clint. <laughs> that was bad. The warden's mind is made up. I wonder if they made it. They that was Escape from Alcatraz. Just the fact that this was based on a true story just fascinated me. Sure, it changed a bit for the movie, but the basic premise is still the same. These guys were clever and ballsy. No bodies were ever recovered, nor were they ever spotted or apprehended. 
I like to believe they made it. I'm also fascinated by movies that make me root for the bad guy. Frank was cool, brilliant, intelligent, daring. He had balls of steel. Frank was always on top of things, always thinking, always plotting. He's fearless. He gets cozy with groups that would probably shiv him in another movie. He cases every room he's in. He's smart. He'll kick your ass, but he'd rather slip away and not call attention to himself. You soon forget about his criminal background and why he's in prison in the first place. You can't have a prison movie without a nasty Nate. Instant enemy, just add water. He's not around for most of the movie, and again poses no actual threat to Frank when so many others got his back. Patrick McGowan's character was created for the movie, so his evil shtick wasn't necessarily representative of any existing Alcatraz Wardens. So when the good guy is really a bad guy, how do you make the bad guy even badder? That's a word, right? You have him be cruel. You have him abuse his power. You make him hateable in every way possible. He's so inhuman, they didn't even bother giving him a name. Was he testifying before Congress? The bastard makes the prisoners look downright tame in comparison, considering Alcatraz was meant for the worst of the worst. His downfall is not over the top in a Shawshank way, but you still get the impression he's not coming out of this unscathed. The Anglin brothers also escaped with Frank, but for the movie they were a means to an end. Extra manpower to get Frank out. Butts is more of a character, and we see some backstory and get to see more of his relationship with the outside world just to remind the audience what Frank is missing. When he loses his nerve at the end, it's a sad moment because, yeah, it's the first time you see anyone with any fear. The other inmates just seem to be here to give Frank what he needs, advice, intel, or someone to talk to. The shots are held long enough for the audience to take it all in, and then some. You start to feel an association with the characters when you experience a lot of the more mundane things in real time, such as grabbing breakfast. Eastwood is mainly being Eastwood, a scowling, somber man of few words. He doesn't show much vulnerability, but you can't in this environment and expect to stay on top. The plan was clever. It did seem to rely on some level of coincidence and happenstance that would make Danny Ocean proud. Whether they survived or not, they indeed escaped Alcatraz as intended. We may never know whatever happened to them, so it's just up to our imagination. The script has just enough humor not to weigh things down, but not too much to betray the tense tone. There's a lot of tension in this movie, which the filmmakers allow to build. It's well shot, and sound design gives this paranoid feel. The sound of the bay with the foghorns and seagulls really makes this place feel isolated. Well, I always knew crime would pay. Escape from Alcatraz is four Bs. It's not an action movie, but a tense thriller. Frank's intelligence makes his character more interesting than a guy who beats up everyone in sight. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and comment. You know how it goes. Still in a hotel room, but I'll be home soon. This is the new V, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles!